Hi, my name is Jenny Martin and I'm part of the 14th cohort of the Data School at the Information Lab. And I'm also one of the Doctor Preppers for Prep and Data, which is a weekly challenge website where you can really hone your Tableau Prep skills. So there'll be a link to that in the description below. Today we're going to be talking about using different types of joins and more specifically which rows of your data are being included and excluded following on from the join step. So let's just go into Tableau Prep. We've got some nice simple data to talk about this with. We've got some order IDs um, and we've got some return reasons for certain order IDs. So we've got three rows in this data set, four rows in this data set. So what happens when we join them together? How many rows do we end up with? Well, naturally that's going to depend on our join, on the type of join that we're doing. So to create that join step, we can pick up our clean two step and drag it up to our clean one and hover to the right of that to make it a join. We drop it on there. Now you'll notice that our first data set here is blue. So that's respond, corresponding to the order data set. And the second data set is this orangey color and that corresponds to the returns. Now, if I were to have instead created this join by picking up um, our orders data set first and dragging it to the returns, then you will notice that here the orange set um, data set is before the blue one. So not a huge difference, but it does make a little difference. And when you're talking about right or left joins, you just need to remember which data set is on the right and left. Um, and that depends on the order that you've um, dragged and dropped them, basically. But anyway. That's more of a side note, really. Let's just focus on the topic that we're discussing today, which is um, different join types and what values are included and which values are excluded. So one thing to mention, first of all, if I just zoom in quickly, we've got our join step here. We've got our join type down here. So at the moment, our join type is an inner. So you notice that by just the middle of the Venn diagram being shaded in, we can change this to be a left join by clicking to the left. And you can see that corresponds to the step in our canvas. So it's all very visually clear what's happening in our data set. We can make it a full join. You get the idea. I'm just going to change that back to an inner join. And you can see it's gone back to just being the middle of the Venn diagram. So now if we're checking out our uh, mismatched values, they are the ones that are in red. So we're joining on our order IDs and order ID 1 and 3 in our orders data set haven't been returned. So they don't exist in our returns data set. And order ID number 5 doesn't seem to have an order ID. It never seems to have been an order that's been placed. So maybe that's an incorrect um, return order ID number. Perhaps we're not sure. But that's a good way of sort of getting an overview of the values that themselves that are being excluded. We can check this box here just to see the mismatch values. If we have a lot of values, then that'll be useful um, to go and quickly find out which ones we need to investigate, which ones are mismatched. But my favorite bit of the join uh, tool is this section here, the summary of join results. So we've got a section for included rows, a section for excluded rows. So I'm going to zoom out again, just so that I can click on one of those. So at the moment, included in our join going forwards would be two rows for order ID two and four. And if we click on our excluded rows, then we just get a bit more information. Rather than just having the order IDs that drop out, we can see information about the item and the price as well. If we also want to see what's dropping out from the returns table, get a bit more information about that, then we can click on um, the excluded from clean two. And it kind of doesn't really look nice. It adds this extra null row here, it adds a couple of null rows there. So I can just click on the excluded um, blue um, bar again, just to get rid of that. So it only shows our clean two excluded values. And you can see that we don't really get any more information about this um, order ID five that's falling out. It's just broken. It doesn't really help us make any decisions going forwards. But if I just bring up these order IDs again, these are the order IDs which have not been returned. So clearly we're kind of thinking about our data set. We think that we would actually like these to be in our data set going forwards. We wouldn't want to exclude them just because they haven't been returned. So we're going to turn this join into a left join. And now you can see that those rows that were excluded here, they've jumped over to here. We can still see that 
two of our rows matched, so they have a match with the returns, but then two of them were, you know, they, they're unmatched, but they'll still be in the data set going forwards. So it's very visually showing you how many rows we've got going forwards and how many of them have a match or not in the uh, other data set. So I hope that's useful for you to understand um, how many rows we would get going forwards um, with our different join types and um, how we can manipulate that to really see the data that we want to see. So thank you very much for watching. Please do subscribe to this channel. Check out our previous video on join clauses. And coming up next, we have a video on appending data. Thank you for watching.